Hi, and welcome to another video on UiPath with me, Jeppe. In this one, we're going back to basics and taking a look at the try-catch activity. The try-catch activity is an overlooked and underused activity, if you ask me, and it's an activity that can help you catch and handle errors properly inside of your automations. So let's get to it. So I'm inside Studio and I have a blank project here. Also on the right side of the screen, we have the Windows Calculator, and that's my favorite victim when doing these kinds of demos. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag in a click activity into my workflow. That activity I'm going to copy and paste a few instances in. And the first thing I'm going to click up here is going to be the 7 button in the calculator. Next, I'll click the plus button. Then I'll click the 9 button. And then I'll click the equals button. So if I press 7 plus 9 equals, that should give us 16. So the next thing I'll do is I'll try to get the full text of that result up here. And the get full text activity is simply the best activity to get this field from calculator. So I'll indicate the field and the result will save by clicking control K to a new variable called result. So the last thing we'll do is we'll log a message saying result is, and then write out the value of the result variable. So there we go. We have a simple automation. If we run this, we can see that it clicks 7 plus 9 equals. And in the output window over here, it puts out that the result is 16. So that's all good and fine. But what if in this activity right here that clicks the 9 button, and you'll have to excuse that this is all in Danish. But if we change this to instead click the 4 button, you would think that everything would be okay, but it won't. Because in this get full text activity down here, the selector is very, very specific in that it expects a field where the result is 16. So if we run it again, and before we do that, I will just change the timeout for this get full text activity, because by default it's 30 seconds, which is 30,000 milliseconds. I'll just change that to 3,000 milliseconds. So now we'll only have to wait three seconds for the exception to be thrown. So it writes 7 plus 4 equals, and now it's expecting 16, but it's finding 11. So it's not finding that element. And we can see here that it throws an exception, and the exception type is UiPath core selector not found exception. Selector not found exception. Make a note of that, and we'll click OK. And this is basically a disaster, because we don't want our automation to end like this. We want to handle the error that just occurred a little more elegantly, so that we can finish the execution in a controlled manner. So what we can do is we can use the try catch activity and it's in the toolbox and we can drag it in. And the try catch activity contains three sections, the try, the catches and the finally sections. The try section is what we want to try to do. So in here, we'll drop the activities that we're trying to perform. In the catches section, we try to sort of predict what kind of exceptions or errors could occur during the execution of the stuff in the try block. Now, if we're not sure what kind of exceptions might occur, we could just add a new generic exception by using the system exception type here. And once we do that and click, we'll get a new block here where we can, we can add some activities. And we might as well do that right away. We'll log a message if something bad happens. It'll be at the warning level. And we'll just say that bad thing happened. And we can write out the message property of the exception object that we have here. So now, formally, we have actually handled an exception properly. We haven't done anything in the try section yet. We'll get to that in just a second. But in the finally block, we can now perform an action that will be performed regardless of what happens in the try and catches, with the exception that only if we don't have any exceptions or we don't have any unhandled exceptions will the finally block be executed. So in the finally block, we are going to add another log message. And we'll just make this an info level message saying we are done. Now back to the try section up here, because this is where it's all at. What do we want to do here? Well, we want to get the full text from the results field. And then we also want to write out the result to the log message. So we'll add that as well. And if we run the automation now, it will still fail 
because it still cannot find that uh, field up here because it's expecting a field that has the value of 16 in it. But if we run it, it'll be handled a little bit more elegantly because it'll try to do the sequence, getting the result and logging the message. And it's telling us that it couldn't do that. It will first display the actual exception here, but it'll also show us this message that was generated by our log message activity inside of the catches block here. And then it will, because we did handle it properly in the exception block here, it will go to the finally block, writing out the log message that we're done. Now, when executing this kind of try block, in many situations, you could expect more than one type of exception to occur. You know, maybe you can't connect to a database. Maybe you don't have permissions to a folder. You know, a lot of different things can happen. And in our example so far, we just handled it all with a system exception, the generic type of exception. And we can add more exception types to this catches section. So if we add another one, now we made a note that the actual exception type was the selector not found exception. So if we add that in here and click, we get another block where we can add more activities. So we'll add another log message here and we'll make this a warning as well. And we'll just type in instead of the whole uh, message from the exception object, we'll just type in could not find that selector. And this is again, consider a proper handling of the exception. In a real world scenario, you probably would want to do something else, but formally we are now handling the exception. And now we have two types of exceptions in our catches block, the exception and the selector not found exception. And which one will we then react to? Well, you might think that because the first one up here, the exception, which is the generic system exception, because that also matches and is first in line, then this is the one that would handle the exception. It's not. The runtime will evaluate all of the exception types that you have in your catches block and take the one that is the closest match to the exception that occurred. And in our case, that will be the selector not found exception. So if we run it again, this is the log message that we should see over here and not this whole uh, orange bad thing happened type thing. So let's uh, try and run it again. And we can see that that is in fact what happened. So that's a quick walkthrough of the try catch activity. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notification bell. It would mean a lot to me and to you, it would mean that you get a notification every time I put out a new video. So that's it for this time. Stay safe. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.